This is the first impression video of the recently aired Chinese web drama Pillow Book, aka The Eternal Love of Dream. Hi, you're watching Up New X, where junkie and good storytelling shares their thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. And can we say, what the heck is with that translation? Pillow book is so cool. What the heck is with eternal love of dream? I feel like the person who is in charge of translating the titles of all three dramas in this whole sort of franchise need to learn English again. Eternal love, love and destiny, eternal love of dream. Really? Seriously? That's all you can do? It needs no further introduction. It is the second one, the real second drama in the 10 Miles of Peach Blossoms, Three Lifetimes, Three Worlds universe based on the web novel written by the same author who wrote 10 Miles of Peach Blossoms. And that person doesn't have the best reputation. <laughs> A quite large number of people who would boycott this drama no matter what because they want to boycott the original author being one of the worst plagiarism cases in recent years but there are also a lot of book fans of pillow books so right now this drama has aired 12 episodes in china so my first impression is based on those 12 episodes judging by the statistics that i have seen so far about the view counts of this drama it's actually doing really well among all the other web dramas being on the first uh, consistently, although recently only over the weekend because Find Yourself got put forward in the schedule trying to compete with this drama of the first position. In terms of web drama view counts popularity, this drama is 56 episodes long. Around middle of February, they're gonna do the VVIP thing again. So if you have extra money to spend, you can finish watching this drama early March. Otherwise, right around spring equinox. First, let me say the things that I like about the drama so far, and then I'm gonna say the problems I have with this drama. First, what I really like about this drama is it has a really cute CGI fox, which is basically uh, Feng Jiu, uh, Delirio Bas character's natural animal form being a red fox. I know it sounds really weird, but if you've watched a couple of episodes in the beginning, you'll know she doesn't have almost ha hardly any direct interaction with our lead male character. Character, Dong Hua Di Jun. Most of her time with our male lead is when she is in a fox form. So the drama deals with it with a um, CGI fox plus this kind of mental space where it's the actress acting but she's acting against probably a green screen when she shot it. There's extensive time that you don't really see actor and actress really looking at each other. It's the um, actor looking at a <laughs> digital fox. They didn't opt for the ultra realistic fox, they opt for the more animated fox. So the fox has a lot of human expression, the eyes, the face, the not existing but you can feel their eyebrows. I especially like the facial expressions of this digital fox. I think I love the fox most <laughs> in the so far 12 episodes. So you could say that's a good thing, also you could say that might be problematic because it's still a human live action drama and um, somehow it's a digital thing that makes you more emotionally feeling attached. The second thing I like about this drama is I think because I have so much history with 10 Miles of Peach Blossoms, my channel began because of 10 Miles. Mentally, I see a lot of the characters, actors in 10 Miles as old friends. So when I see them reoccurring, it's really heartwarming. For example, the actor who played Simeon now is Simeon again. Lian Song is also in here. Even Heavenly Emperor, although he only showed up like very briefly, he's also the same actor. Bai Qian's father, so the uh, grandfather of Feng Jiu, is the same actor also. So I'm really happy to see them. Obviously, it's a different production, so there are different actors who are now playing roles that used to exist in 10 Miles, such as Zhe Yan's actor has changed from Zhang Zhiyao to Chen Chuhe, although I really like Chen Chuhe, so I'm happy with that, and they use the same voice dubbing actor for the role. So there's a, there's a level of consistency in there. They also changed the actor who played Bai Zhen from Yu Monglong to Huang Junjie, at least in the department of being the best looking person in the entire universe uh, still works. You have a different Ali now uh, because the kid has probably grown up so you can't use the same kid. You also have different Cheng Yu but I also like her quite a lot uh, so far. So happy with the supporting roles actually, very happy. And obviously our two leads are the same leads that you see in Ten Mouse Peach Blossoms, Gao Guang, and Di Li Ba. These are the things 
I like about this drama so far, which is not a lot and not that prominent. So now, you know, I'm gonna talk about the things I don't like about this drama. Before I start to go into details, please understand personal opinions. And I just think, you know, if you're reviewing something, better to stay honest with what you actually feel. So first thing about this drama that just made me go, mm -hmm, is the uh, production design. Like what happened? I did the most research I could possibly do. And this drama has different director, different producer, different scriptwriter, different makeup of the production companies as opposed to Tomatoes of Peach Blossom. So probably it's just the um, copyright of the uh, original work is from the same author. That's the thing that's keeping it in the universe. Also some same actors reoccurring. In terms of the crew, kind of like totally different. Maybe that's the reason why things just don't look like they come from the same universe. Love and Destiny, Ten Mouse, Peach Blossoms look much more like coming from the same world. The visual language feels very consistent. Whereas this drama just doesn't feel like it belongs to the same world. Honestly, it looks cheap. The color palette looks really weird and it has that really cheap, plasticky, unrealistic color. You know what gold looks like in real life? It doesn't look like lemon yellow. But in this drama, the heavenly palace is heavily decorated with gold that looks like plastic and fake and lemon. Even if you don't touch the stuff, right, you can almost feel like things are fake, like really, really fake. Then the costume is also not that well made. You can feel the texture is lesser of a quality than what you see in the other two dramas. There's some really bad red color. <laughs> Let's just say it. <laughs> It's, it's a pain, it's eyesore. Also, um, the styling of the major roles. Dong Huai Jun pretty much didn't change at all because he has fake hair all the way and you can't really do much with that fake hair anyway. So he's gonna look very consistent as he looks from 10 miles. But what they did with Feng Jiu's role, with Dili Ba's role, I really don't like uh, the hairstyle change. She has a tiny face, yes. But in 10 miles, they would actually make her hair look a slightly fuller and bigger so that she has an even smaller face on screen. And that proportion works really well. Whereas in this drama, they braid her hair really tight. So proportionally, it doesn't look as good. Even the, the wig quality is less. Like, do you remember how good people's hair look like in 10 miles of peach blossoms? So slick and black and flowing and beautiful. And in this drama, even the wet quality is like, mm, what's happening with that? Then the lighting is really awful. This drama didn't use a lot of skin smoothing, so I'm fine with that. But doesn't mean you can run away from lighting it properly. Mm, what's that drama? Xiaomi Chen Chen? Ash? Ash of Love? Like, I can't remember the translation. Anyway, with Yang Zi and um, Dong Lun. I've talked about having super harsh shadows on people's face in that drama. And in this drama, in the first couple of episodes, when they're in the Heavenly Palace, you can see that everywhere too. It clearly is a built set. So every light in that um, room is fully controlled by humans, which means you can totally do anything you want with your lighting. You can make it hard. You can make it soft. You can give it different colors. You can make background pop more background drops more like depending on where you are anything it feels like they hired a lighting team who doesn't know how to light stuff properly it's like we don't have diffusers which we know is not true they definitely have diffusers but somehow they don't know how to use it maybe they don't know how to use flags they, they don't know how to use anything it's just really bad shadows and it also often comes from weird angles that doesn't really complement the already very good looking actor and actresses i mean really these people are really good looking you just need to work a little bit and they will look very good on screen but um, this drama just have a lot of shots that make me go, who did that? Like, did they ever like learn how to do it properly? It's just baffling. Like, it's a real production. It's not like a school project. Why does it look so bad? Once it's in a human realm, it looks better now. I don't know. Maybe it's because the sets that they had with the heavenly realm had problems with lighting. I have no idea. These are the things in the hardware department. But I think the biggest problem is the script the directing and also the chemistry between the two leads. So in terms of script, they've written the milestones, the things that they have to go to or do in the development of the plot line and everything just just hits there within the plan perfectly. There's no serendipity happening in this drama so far. Nothing extra other than what's written on the paper. Literally, I say something, you say something plainly on surface, you understand it in that way, you get that information in that way. There's no extra thing going on. There's no undercurrent, there's no buzz, there's no chemistry. It's like reading a 
instruction of how to put together an IKEA furniture. It just gives so little space for on screen synergy to happen. So I can almost watch it as an audio play uh, and I don't want that. I want a drama that can actually pull me in and I will look at the screen, stare at it and do not want to lose even one second. Then I'm guessing it has a lot to do with the director to squeeze out all the possibilities of a scene. If you look at Tim Miles, you look at Love and Destiny, uh, both are directed by Ling Yifen who is very good at directing romantic relationships, human interactions, the tiny things that happen without speaking. There are so many classic scenes in 10 Miles and in Love and Destiny that people are hardly talking or they have very little lines spoken, but so much information is conveyed through how they look at each other, how they move their small gestures, how they pace it. It's like meaty and juicy and there's emotional stuff going on. I remember uh, in Ten Miles Peach Blossom that scene when Ye Hua and Su Su got married in that little hut. And there's this shot on track looking at their bed. They're sitting on their bed and the shot is closing in on them slowly. And there's that almost touching, not touching, touching, not touching, and Ye Hua tried to grab her hand four or five times. Tiny things. You probably don't write that in script because you can't really write it. That's totally due to the actor and actress's ability. Also, definitely the director being able to communicate and what is the design of this thing? How are we gonna shoot it? How the timing works, how everything works, you know? That's what we want to see in dramas. That's the natural habitat and niche of visual storytelling, of drama, of film. In radio plays, you can do that. You can ever let people hear that scene. In pictures, you can show that motion. It only happens with this medium. And I think that director is a master of pulling that performance out of people and designing each and everything to hit the maximum emotional impact, whatever value it is in the whole plotline. Pillow Book doesn't have it so far in the episodes I've seen. I don't know what happens in the future. I'm worried because right now it's 12 episodes and still I haven't felt any real connection to the two lead characters or their relationship. Ten Miles has a couple of episodes longer and I think by episode 14, 15, they already got married in the hut. Love and Destiny has 60 episodes, so proportionally at the same stage of the episodes count. Lin Xi has already done a huge sacrifice for Jiu Chen. Jiu Chen, I think, is around the time when he kind of lost his abilities. Those funny things happened in their palace and that build up of their affinity towards each other has already gotten to a very important stage and that chemistry is already everywhere. The final thing I think that resulted in this lesser than desirable quality of this drama so far is the actor's abilities, to be very honest. I think Dilara Ba is quite a capable actress. If she gets the right direction, she could do better, more than what she has done in this drama. So far in this drama, she really is just being cute. She's convincing enough as that cute little fox who is less experienced in everything. But that card has kind of already been played in the first 10 miles. I just feel everything she's done so far is totally within expectation. As for Gao Guang, I just never got his acting. I mean, in 10 miles of peach blossoms, he just looks really cool. Cool cool there. Uh, in this drama so far, he is mostly just being also cool. I'm just being honest, I don't get his acting. I probably need to see some kind of quantum leap level of improvement in his acting to get why I should care about Dong Hua Di Jun's role and why I should care the relationship between him and um, Feng Jiu. Finally, finally, last. It's just this whole genre is getting really old or maybe I'm getting old when I watch Love and Destiny. The only reason I loved it so much is because of the, all the actors, the great acting, the detailed scenes that's been played out that literally pulls on your heart and your hormones and your emotion. But in terms of script itself, plot itself, character setup, it's so old, so tropey. It's like, I wish this genre can just go temporarily into hibernation in the entire drama land so more new stuff can come out. Maybe like 20 years later, we can do a retro drama that totally brings the genre back, but taking a very interesting angle at it maybe, or doing it in totally inventive way. Now, it's like beating a dead horse. The horse is so old and dead in this whole genre. I'm just getting really tired of it, being very honest. Only like godsend acting can save 
this genres place in my heart and make me think it's worth spending my time. And judging by the episodes I've seen so far, I have very little faith of that actually happening with Pillow Book. Thank you for watching Avenue X. Do let me know what your opinions are and I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.